Well, I think when we talk about motorcycle ergonomics, we're talking not only about the sort of physical design of a motorbike and how it fits the rider, but also how people ride motorbikes and the technology that they use, the way that they ride, the way they use the environment and the road system around them. And, um, and that encompasses a whole sort of uh, range of, of aspects of, of not just the physical design, but, but um, the way that people think, the way that people react in different situations. Um, and so that's really what we mean by ergonomics in the widest sense. For this I'll have to deactivate the alarm. Okay, so I suppose when we, when we look at motorbike ergonomics, what we, one of the key things we're looking at is the way that people fit on the bike and how the bike fits them. Motorbikes come in a standard size. And so whether you're big or small will dictate on really pretty much what you can ride. So as a, as a fairly long legged rider, I can get on this bike, but if you were fairly short, then your legs wouldn't reach the ground. You'd feel a bit unstable. Um, and it'd be much harder to ride this or feel confident on it, which then may distract you from actually riding around and, and being safe on the road. Um, you've also got a whole host information here in, this, you know, in terms of the displays and controls that you've got at your fingertips. And again, even simple things like, can you actually reach everything? Um, is it within the right sort of range of your thumb to actually use these controls? Can you actually use them very quickly in a reaction situation? So can you hit the horn or can you actually hit the kill switch within a very quick period of time? If you spend time thinking about where things are, that's where the ergonomic issues really could be enhanced. I think the interesting, for me is that, uh, the interesting thing for me is that there's not a lot of research out there in, in terms of these issues. We've got quite a lot of knowledge in terms of motorcycle accidents and uh, some basic issues of, of rider sizes and rider comfort. But in terms of understanding how people ride motorbikes and what they, what they need as users, if you like, from an ergonomics point of view, what do they need in terms of the information that they get from the road and from the motorbike um, to make themselves safe or to perform things properly, um, we really don't have a lot of answers there. Um, I'm a day-to-day -day biker, um, I've got a passion for motorbikes and I'm not here really to sort of tell people how to ride a bike or how to be safe on the road. What I'm trying to do is explore some of the issues as to why that occurs and why that happens in the real world. If we can then feed that back through magazines and through popular media, that's great, but I don't expect everybody to sit down with a journal paper and, and learn it and, and take it uh, as, as a kind of gospel of, of how, to, how they should be riding. I think if we can get um, more people doing research, that's a good thing because then we've got more people conducting um, research in different areas. I think also if... Um, sorry, I don't know if that car is going to disturb us, right. Um, I think also if we can start to get manufacturers to take on board some of the issues um, and bring them more to the forefront of their design process, I think that was a good thing as well. At the moment we get motorbikes as a standard size, they, you can't change them to fit different size riders. Um, and we're very much stuck with what we get. I think if we can get manufacturers to think more long term about different riders' needs, about different sized riders' needs, maybe different riders' needs as they get older and maybe they, their, their thinking slows down or their, their, their sight isn't quite as good, um, these are things that maybe we can incorporate into new displays and new ways of supporting riders at different times of their riding life. Yeah, so would I actually. I'm, I'm really not sure what the simple answer is on that because some motorbike companies do have ergonomics teams in their design teams themselves. Um, but these seem to be issues which they're not really actively exploring. And I think in terms of getting a, a niche in the market or, or exploiting a wider market sector, if somebody actually hit the nail on the head with ergonomics and developed a motorcycle that was fit for purpose for a number of riders in different situations, they would have something that would actually sell much, much better. That isn't the case at the moment and I'm not sure why. I think one day I'd like to see motorcycle ergonomics being taken more seriously, being researched by a much wider group of people than it is now. There's only a handful of us in the world doing this kind of work. Um, and yeah, one day, why not? Why, why not let Nottingham be the leading light in motorcycle ergonomics? Because at the moment there's nobody else out there doing this kind of work in, in a university context. Yeah, well we're developing a motorbike simulator here at the university, which is the first of its kind in the world. Um, we're also developing research into real road riding, so we're doing things while riders are actually on the road, videoing them, giving them questionnaires when they finish their rides, to actually get that kind of really, um, get, get a real handle on what they're feeling at the time of their riding, um, what sort of issues have been important to them during... <laughs> So you're saying about yeah. sort of questionnaires? Yeah. 
Yeah, we're also sort of doing a lot of work into real road research, if you like. The idea of actually measuring people while they're out on, the real, on their motorbikes for real, um, giving them questionnaires, videoing them, seeing how they use their controls, maybe where they're looking um, and things like that. And I think, you know, that's, that's really important, not to just do the academic simulated research, but actually get out there on the road and do it for real. It is, and I think, um, I think for me, you know, I've always been interested in motorbikes. I see other people around the school interested in other aspects of science, um, and it's great to be able to sort of conduct work in an area that you're interested in. Sometimes it doesn't quite feel like you're doing real work, but um, I think there's a, a, an issue there for us all to explore in terms of uh, developing our hobbies into, uh, into real research. I think so. I think, um, I think if you look at the sort of demographics of road users... <laughs> got a big lorry coming. <coughs> Um, I think if you look at the demographics of road users, uh, there's no denying that motorcycling is still a niche in, in a wider, wider sector and we are a small number of road users, therefore we have maybe less command of... <laughs> me. Uh, how, how ironic that the cars and lorries are yeah, causing cars and lorries, <laughs> The bane of our lives. Yeah. Um, but no, I think, I think as, a, as a kind of um, uh, a platform, we, we, we've got a much smaller platform than maybe car users or cyclists or other, other road users that, that are more um, high agenda sort of uh, research areas. Um, but that's not to say that if we can make motorcycling safer, we could get more people doing it, it's much more ecologically friendly, um, environmentally friendly, um, because we sort of use less fuel and all this sort of stuff. Um, and I think really, you know, uh, we are suffering from the fact that we are just a niche market at the moment. Well, I think so. I think, I think motorcycling does um, have a certain sort of uh, rebellious kind of uh, um, sort of streak to it and people maybe don't want to be told how to ride and don't, don't necessarily want to listen maybe to uh, how they should be doing things. And you see that in training programmes, you know, you often see people don't apply for training, advanced training and things like that, um, maybe because they think they know it all already. Um, and I guess maybe we do have to break through that with motorcycling and we have to sort of uh, build up a culture where we are shown to be doing research for the wider good rather than telling people what to do. Do you think if motorcycles were all perfectly designed for people and everything was safe and that it would lose some of that appeal, some of that danger that people love? Quite possibly. I think there is a certain element of the, the sort of being on the edge sometimes and pushing yourself to the limits. But um, I think if you know what your limits are and, and you know where the edges are, if you like, then uh, you can actually enjoy things a bit more. So uh, I think, you know, we, we, we have to accept that there are limits, but help people maybe explore those limits in a safer kind of way.